Welcome, everybody. Welcome back to the Mr. Blue Podcast. I am your host, Mr. Blu-ray. Um, welcome to the remake of episode 14. Now, I am still getting around to my Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. review. Um, I'm still figuring out, like, how to properly set that one up. I, I, I don't want to, like, go into it unprepared, you know, just like, I'm just really thinking about this, so, but don't worry, you guys are gonna, you're gonna like it. So, as always, I'm brainstorming, and I thought, what, what is a better way for the next episode to talk about something that I always, I always talk about and preach about on the channel, and hopefully this will be acknowledged by basically everybody, yep. I'm talking about different cuts of different movies, uh, director's cuts, extended cuts, um, editor's cuts, you name it, um, you name it cuts, <laughs> imagine if that was an actual thing, um, guys, I, I am left to believe that, uh, this is just my belief on this. You guys don't have to agree with me on it, but just, just bear with me where I'm going with this. Um, I do believe probably the first extended cuts of movies, if you will, is started with George Lucas. I'm talking about the original trilogy of Star Wars, like the special editions, like back in 1997. Sure. Um, you guys... You guys are going to scream at me in the comments like, Dave, like he, he was using like CG to better, to better the stuff. And like, sure, that was, I, it's probably safe to say 99.9% .9 of that. But like that 1% is like, um, the only, wait, no, as Right now, I'm thinking of A New Hope, so this applies to A New Hope. If the other scenes from Empire and Jedi come to me, then I'll talk about them. Um, let's talk about the deleted scene, which made it into the final cut in 97, which was the Jabba the Hutt scene. Now, thank God George filmed this scene way back in the day, and this would technically be Boba Fett's first appearance, right? But, of course... Uh, they had like a stand-in to come in, and like I, George was way ahead of his time. Like he knew what he was doing when he, when he shot this scene, and then years later, when the technology was advancing, like he finally made Jabba. But unfortunately, uh, let's see. I have both of the original versions, like on VHS, the gold and silver ones, like full screen and silver screen. Unfortunately, that original 1997 cut of Jabba the Hutt just it was just crap but then again like i said george lucas was experimenting on this so that was the first scene the other scene that they actually shot for the special editions was the uh stormtrooper scene on tatooine that the sand troopers right so they had like again a bunch of like stand-ins like stunt guys extras what whatever you want to call it uh, probably not stunt guys but like um like if you have the complete saga box set, you should know on the documentaries and spoofs disc, the bones disc three, um, there's one called enemy of a do back. And that one is really important to look at because again, George, he wanted to, um, again, back in his time in the seventies, he was pretty limited with that scene. Like he, like there was no extra stormtroopers. Like there was, like, again, even in that little documentary, like, the people behind the scenes are like, George wanted you to know, like, there was more stormtroopers, like, on Tatooine. Like, the Empire didn't just send, like, three or four guys, right? Like, they, they shot an additional scene, and I like that. Like, that is that is pretty cool. And, like, um, because if you remember the in the original version, um, the do-back was just one puppet in the background, right? But, like, again, as you look look at the special editions, whichever ones you're watching, uh, VHS, the DVDs, the Blu-rays, like, um, it's there. <laughs> like, um, yeah, so, again, this is just my belief, my opinion on, like, I, I, I am left to believe that the original trilogy was the first to start the extended cuts. I could be wrong. You guys can let me know in the comments because, um... I know I'm never going to watch these, and I, I mean this, guys, when I say this, uh, the Matrix franchise. I'm never going to watch those. Um, from from what I've been told, um, the first movie has a director's cut. And even back in the day when Netflix was good, um, when both my parents 
rewatched that film on Netflix, they were, I don't think they were necessarily complaining, but they were like, man, I don't remember seeing this. Something, and I, I, I solved their problem. Like, it's probably a director's cut. That's why it's rated R because like they can cut out a lot of stuff, you know? Um, Warner Brothers is a good example of this. Like, um, they, they purposely, on a rare occasion, like, they would purposely cut out some stuff for the theatrical release. And, you know, eventually, like, the director, sometimes the director would want their final product to be released physically, right? Um, you guys should know where I'm going with this. Um, talking about 2016's Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice. Um, I'm not gonna lie though, guys, like, sometimes when I'm watching, like, different cuts of a movie, some, my brain is still, it's not used to it yet, like, I need to watch it more and more, like, it's still used to, like, the fact that, uh, as, again, with BVS, like, I used to, like, watch the theatrical version all the time, like, my brain's expecting, like, oh, isn't this scene supposed to be like that, or, like, like, no, I'm not gonna go back to watch the theatrical version, no, um, the reason why Warner Brothers did not want to release a three-hour version of BVS is because, like, I, again, I, I just said right there, it was three hours long. Um, and because of, like, the theatrical version, like, it confused a lot of people. So thank God uh, Zack Snyder released, you know, his cut, uh, the Ultimate Edition, they call it. But I, I just call it the Director's Cut because, guys, when 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 some when, when a movie is called a Director's Cut, that means it's rated R. Um of course, we we obviously know what extended cut means, like it, it's showing extended scenes, right? Like um, most of the time they're PG thirteen or not rated for whatever dumb reason. Um, so yeah, you need to watch the director's cut of BVS because it fills in the blanks. Like the reason why it's rated R, it's because of the last thirty minutes. Like. Um, I don't think BVS needed to be rated R, in my opinion, guys. Um, I'm not sure how many like cuts I'm going to be talking about. I pulled out every single cut that I have for my movie collection. Like, um, I kind of wanted to go in order, but we'll, we'll see how that goes, right? Um, editor's cuts. Um, this rarely comes up, and I always try to promote this all the time on my channel, too. Like, the Tobey Maguire movies, guys. 2017 was honestly a big year for Spider-Man, like, not only for Tom Holland's, but, like, Tobey Maguire's, because if you guys still have, or if you remember the Tobey Maguire digibook that came out 2017, you know that was the only way, besides digital, that was the only way you could get Spider-Man 3, the editor's cut, physically. Yep, it was on the bonus disc, and I don't know why they didn't put it on the, um, regular Blu-ray disc, like they did with uh, Spider-Man 2.1, because you can get the extended cut of Spider-Man 2 on both Blu-ray and DVD. Like, I, I have I have the, the rare 2.1 DVD, right? So it's always nice to have it on hand. Like, um, some, of, some of the deleted scenes of Spider-Man 3 made it into the final film, but like, um, and it, they, they, uh, they shortened it. I'm pretty sure Sam Raimi was the one that made it. It's probably because, like, it's his cut. Like, if if you guys know your Spider-Man history, specifically Tobey Maguire, you should know, like, uh, Sam Raimi had a totally different vision, totally different script of the film, but, of course, like, Avi Arad got involved. So, like, at least he tried to make his version of the film, like, like decent, you know? And I like it. Like, the editor's cut of Spider-Man 3 is worth it, guys, okay? That's why, like... I I don't I don't recommend watching Spider Man's two and three on Disney Plus because I don't know why Disney does not offer like any cuts in general for like other movies right like um, I'm happy that Daredevil like 2003's Daredevil dropped on Disney Plus but like they need to offer the director's cut of that movie just because like again it's better like Daredevil works like that in that rating right um, we'll, we'll get to Daredevil in a bit here but um. Yeah, I always try to promote, again, the, the editor, editor's cut as well. Like, again, you could find Spider-Man 2.1 pretty much any platform, right? Like, again, DVD, the 2007 re-release, and um, the Blu-ray. And, again, you could get it digitally. Um, yeah, 
I I always I always say that these cuts of any films like are superior because remember what George Lucas said, guys. Like, no film is really complete. Like again, that's why I say George was way ahead of his time back in the seventies and eighties with Star Wars because he knew what he wanted to do with his movies, right? Like. Seriously, different cuts of a movie, like, that's the superior way to watch them. Like, I like, I really want the world to acknowledge these different cuts, right? So, Sony, if you ever decide to re-release Spider-Man 3 on Blu-ray again, add the editor's cut, please. Because, again, it is so worth it. Because, again, if you watch the original, like... Especially so many scenes are out of place, and um, they're they're really going to confuse you guys. So uh, just take my word for it. Watch the editor's cut of Spider-Man 3, and you'll be so happy. And then I want you to tell me in the comments, guys, like, thank you for recommending this cut uh, for me. And, like, seriously, guys, I want to make your guys' days just by watching the editor's cut. I will not stop preaching about it until it will be acknowledged, Okay. All right, let's let's talk about Daredevil again. The director's cut. Um, so, twenty twenty three, or no, not twenty three, twenty twenty two. Sorry, was the first time I actually got to see the director's cut of that film. And let me tell you, it was that one was worth it for sure. Um, I definitely remember, like like the first time I saw the movie way back in the day. It was obviously the theatrical version, and. Um, and it's good to watch a theatrical version of a movie several times just so that you could prepare yourself to, like, um, get get yourself ready to watch a different cut of a movie. I, I know I said, like, I know what I said, guys. Like, I'm never going to watch a theatrical movie again, like, because there's a different cut out. Like, no. Just, um, like, with the, the Snyder Cut of Justice League, I remember I had the, the Justice League for a while, and I had to, like, Rewatch it every weekend before it came out, and um, of co of course there was a big total difference in color grading with that movie, and I want to talk about that movie as well. Like, um, yeah, like now that Disney has their mature side of things, like uh, they've been having that for two years now, um, they really need to offer the director's cut of Daredevil because. Again, I feel like that's the only way people are going to watch it. And even Charlie Cox himself, he, he admitted, and I agree with him too, like, Daredevil works in a mature setting. Like, whether it's rated R or mature audiences, like, um, but sometimes that isn't always the case, right? Like, like we've seen in She-Hulk, like, he can, he can be comedic, right? But not too much, right? So don't worry, guys, I'm still a true Daredevil fan at heart. <laughs> um... Electra, um, uh, Electra also has a director's cut, um, I have it, uh, with me right now, um, it says it's unrated, now, unrated can usually mean, like, it's rated R, but, remember, I said usually, not every time, but it could still be PG-13, because I, I saw this movie once, and I, I still remember it, like, clear as day, like, um, um, because honestly, this was the first time I've seen it, and I don't know, I don't think I could ever watch the theatrical cut. Now, I'm honestly happy, like, back in the day in its original release, like, the DVD, it did offer the director's cut. Like, I feel like that was the only way you could get that, really. Like, I'm still planning to get that DVD copy, right? Um, yeah, every scene, like, of action, like, was pretty much PG-13, so, like, I had no problems with it, of course. Um, so I could definitely see that being added to Disney Plus soon, hopefully, <laughs> because Jennifer Gardner is coming back for Deadpool and Wolverine, um, because Disney, if, if you want your customers, really, uh, to acknowledge Elektra, you need to put on, like, that movie, okay, so, like, Put out a trailer like, oh, watch the director's cuts of Daredevil and Elektra before you go see DP and W, right? Because, the the especially newcomers, they want to learn more about the character, right? Like, makes sense in my brain, right, guys? Um, okay, so on to Zack Snyder's Justice League. Okay. I love talking about this movie, too, and uh, I'm happy that it's being more acknowledged 
Like, it's been out for three years now, and my gosh, like, time flies. Like, this is a way better cut. And we need to acknowledge more people about this, guys, because even Warner Brothers, Warner Brothers, they do not want to promote this version. They want to keep promoting Joss Whedon's version of the movie. Like, no. No. Like, it's basically a live-action dumb cartoon. Um... Seriously, a four-hour movie is better than, like, I'm talking specifically, like, a four-hour version of this movie is way better than the, what was it like, what was that version, like, an hour and a half? Yeah, Joss Whedon and Warner Brothers did the Justice League dirty. They did Zack Snyder dirty, like, um, I don't know, I kind of miss, like, this this is so annoying. Like whenever you have a movie that's like three or four hours long, the companies are forced to make like two separate discs, you know, like part one, part two. But with digital, thank God I have it on digital. Like you don't have to worry about like popping out the first disc, putting in the new disc, and well, at least it goes the the Snyder cut goes by parts. Um, I don't remember what did uh I think. I think each disc goes by three parts. Like, I'm pretty sure it went, like, to part four or whatever. I haven't watched in a while, but, like, uh, I'll have to check it out. But, like, it, the transition from the last part to, to the next one, like, when they're digging up Superman's grave, like, that is such a smooth transition. And there needs to be more, more and more love for this film, guys. Like, honestly... Zack Snyder's Justice League is the savior of the DCEU, and in my Aquaman 2 review, I did say, like, honestly, I do believe that there's hope for the revival of the DCEU, like, I'm honestly hoping that they could still continue it, right, but, like, Zack Snyder will be the only director to, like, create the stories, right, that's it, like, um, and if Netflix, if Netflix were to pick up the, the, the Zack Snyder rights, like, um, that would be pretty cool, you know? Um, unless if the DCEU was really meant to end off of Zack Snyder's story, then I'll take it. But like I said, guys, and I'm going to keep saying this over and over again, even when new projects come out, I am against James Gunn's new DC Universe. Um, is it safe to say that we can boycott it? Yeah, I'm going there, guys. I am going there. I would want to boycott that universe just because, like, we were stolen. We we got stolen by, like, such great content. Like, yes, the DCEU had its ups and downs, but at the end of the day, I think we can all agree that the Zack Snyder trilogy is probably the only best movies in there. Like, sure, there's a couple other movies in that franchise that are, are cool, too, but, like... I, I even came to... A point in my in my DC life, if you want to call it, I'm like, okay, if DC is going in a totally different direction, not thinking of James Gunn's, then I'm thinking like, okay, Zack Snyder's movies will be the only ones I'll watch for the rest of my life. That's just how it is. Um, unfortunately, the DC EU did not have many um different cuts, like. I remember before the Wonder Woman Blu-ray release came out, there was a lot of theories and speculations like, oh, I wonder if, um, oh, what's her name that directed it? Um, I got the movie here, so I should know. Um, is Patty Jenkins going to release the, like, uh, like an Ultimate Edition, like, director's cut for Wonder Woman? Like, turns out that wasn't necessary. Like, the film came out great, you know? Um... So the only cuts of the DCE we have is BVS, Suicide Squad, and Justice League. And, again, I'm not going to lie, guys. When I first watched <sighs> Suicide Squad 2016, I, I watched the extended cut. And sometimes you can even tell, like, um, especially, like, I don't know if some scenes, like, pause, if you will, or, like... When, when there's certain edits, like, you could tell, like, oh, this was added in, like, or... Or even, like, when you do watch a theatrical movie, and then you see some... 
I, I I don't know if it's safe to say jump cuts, but you think like, oh, something was definitely cut out. Like uh, perfect examples are the Spider Verse um, villain verse movies. Uh, I'm talking about Venom's one and two and Morbius because Morbius definitely had a lot of stuff cut out. Like um, they shot everything in uh, 2019, right? And they should have released the movie. Um, Honestly, in 2020, you know, like we could have had a Spider-Verse related movie in 2020 and they should not have cut anything out. I will keep saying this, guys. OK, Sony, if you ever watch this, re-release the villain verse movies as director's cuts. OK, because remember, like you announced way back in the day that Venom was supposed to be the first Spider-Verse rated R movie. And you stole that from us. And now the fact that we're hearing like, uh, what's his name? Seth Rogen wants to make an animated rated R Venom movie franchise. Like that was pretty cool. Now I know for a fact guys that Sony is not going to delay the rating for Craven the Hunter this time because it's going to keep the R rating. And, um, it's, it's still funny to hear that they, they want Craven the Hunter to be a billion dollar franchise. <laughs> Sony, we need to be realistic here. Like, if you want Craven the Hunter to be the next Venom to be the, a billion dollar franchise, then you got to start listening to the fans. And honestly, guys, I am left to believe that Sony is probably, maybe not possibly, but probably listening to us, the fans. Say maybe that's why they're doing the reshoots and they're pushing the film back to December because uh, isn't Andrew Garfield supposed to be in this one? Like, so he could confirm, like, his universe's part of their world. I don't know. I'm, I'm trying to catch up on a lot of this stuff, but you guys can let me know in the comments. Um, speaking of, um, asking for a, a cut of a different film to come out. Yes. Um, no way home. Spider-Man, no way home. Yes. You can watch the extended cut digitally, but unfortunately, <sighs> Sony did not re-release it for physical. Honestly, if you want my honest opinion, they should have released it on the original release date. Because there was even a lot of rumors, like, uh, I don't think there was any deleted scenes, right? Like, people were expecting, like, a lot of deleted scenes, and, um, again, I got the Blu-ray with me right here, um... It says and more, but I don't. I don't think there was any additional deleted scenes whatsoever. So um, that's why Sony re-released the movie as a September release back in twenty two, and that was a fun experience. But like, yeah, um, this is technically the MCU's first extended cut because back in twenty nineteen, Disney re-released um, Endgame in the theaters again, so it can make more money, right? But like they had some extended scenes, but, like, honestly, those are just some deleted scenes, and unfortunately, I didn't get to go see, like, the re-release, but I know, like, I have seen those deleted scenes, and, um, honestly, guys, I don't know if we're ready for a four-hour, like, Avengers movie, like, maybe with Secret Wars, maybe with Secret Wars, we'll have a four-hour movie, but until then, just, like, I don't think... I don't think we're ready for, like, a four-hour Disney movie in general. Like, literally, Endgame was the first Disney movie to have a three-hour runtime. But, yeah, guys, I would recommend just, just going to Movies Anywhere or Vandango or whatever you have where you purchase your digital movies. Buy the extended cut of No Way Home. So, it shows Sony that you guys care too. And then Sony's probably going to be like, hey, since the fans care so much, like we should re-release the extended cut for a physical release. Like It doesn't have to be released on 4K. I could be fine with that. Like It could be released on a regular Blu-ray. You know, like DVD is probably out of the question, but like, um, Sony, if you could re-release No Way Home, the extended cut on Blu-ray, that'd be fantastic. Um, hmm. I probably am going to talk about 
every extended cut, at least from what I have in my collection, guys. So I don't know how long this video is going to go, but um, I hope you're enjoying this so far. Please leave a like if you're enjoying this. Um, yes, even after all these years later, I still enjoy this movie. It's still one of my favorite DC movies. Um, I'm happy to say I still own it. Both physically and digitally. And yes, I am talking about Green Lantern, the extended cut. I am a huge Green Lantern fan, especially like um, Hal Jordan's. Um, I've always wanted a Green Lantern film for a very long time. And I, I enjoyed the heck out of this movie so much. For me, it's a 10 out of 10 movie. Yes, I said that. What's even make makes this movie even more great is that I I say this all the time too, but like Ryan Reynolds back in twenty one when he was um promoting his new drink, it was green by the way, he was watching Green Lantern while he was drinking that and he tweeted out like like he actually enjoyed the film. Like, thank you, Ryan, because what really bugged me is that like he hadn't seen the film in all these years, and he kept, like, he kept dissing on it. But, guys, think of this. Think of this. There's, like, a silver lining to this. If, if Ryan Reynolds did not agree to this project, then him and Blake Lively would not have been married, you know? I'm sure there's still some, like, Scarlett Johansson and Ryan Reynolds fans out there who still ship them. Like, or, like, oh, they should still be married, but, like, no... Ryan Reynolds and Blake Lively, like, they're they're such a good couple, like... See, see, there's a lot of good things that came out of Green Lantern, guys, so stop trashing on this. Like, I had no idea, especially in the comics, like, how Jordan was this comedic character. I thought, like, they were improving on the character in this movie just because, like, oh, Ryan Reynolds is pretty funny, like, what if we had him as, like, Green Lantern, right? Like, no, how how Jordan, in general, is, like, a really funny dude. He's sarcastic, he makes jokes, like... Seriously, you would want to be Hal Jordan's friend. Seriously, I, I would want to be Hal Jordan's friend. Um, so yeah, uh, I, I say this with every movie, but like, the extended cut is definitely worth it, guys. And it's disappointing that I'm not going to get a Green Lantern too, you know. And technically, guys, Green Lantern was supposed to start the DCEU. Like, I'm never going to see Ryan Reynolds interacting with the Justice League. Um, it's probably a fan fiction I'll make, like, uh, Green Lantern meets the Justice League, right? Like, but, you know, that reality's not going to happen. Um, let's, let's talk about some of the other Fox Marvel, um, movies that have different cuts. Um... It's so like the X-Men franchise, like the Wolverine was pretty much the first one to start off the extended cut, or if you bought the Blu-ray, it, it'll be called like the Un Unleashed Extended Edition, and my gosh, that one is just perfect. It is so perfect. Um, even when you buy like the regular Blu-ray release, when, when it doesn't have it, like when you download the digital code for it, it will have the extended cut. And now, X-Men Days of Future Past, that was the second one to come in, um... The Rogue cut. That one is extremely important. Rogue was barely even in the movie, like, in the theatrical cut. So, like, like it is important to watch and have the Rogue cut. Because she is so important in the end for this movie. So, guys, again, definitely watch it. Okay. Deadpool 2. This one had three different cuts. Theatrical, Super Duper freaking Cut, and Once Upon a Deadpool. Um... So theatrical, you know, and especially with Ryan Reynolds under the mask so long, like, um, he does ad libians, of course, we all know this, like, especially for these different cuts, um, because we don't know what he's actually saying underneath, like, he's just voicing over the mask, right? So, um, just watch the theatrical cut first, guys, obviously, and watch the super duper freaking cut, and this, again, this is where the ad libian comes in, besides, like, the extended scenes, right? Like, um... There's different dialogue changes for sure in these super duper cuts, so I'm going to keep watching that version for sure. And Once Upon a Deadpool. 
again, that's the PG-13 version of this movie. And, uh, of course, they had to cut out a lot of scenes. And, again, different ad libians. Like, um, for any families who are going to watch that, like, it makes a lot of sense, right? Um, so now, like, with the strike over, like, Ryan Reynolds could could do more ad libians for Deadpool and Wolverine, right? And I love that because, again, we're never going to know what he's actually saying under the mask, right? Um, okay, Fantastic Four, the 2005 version. Believe it or not, guys, and I, I have talked about this a little bit, and I've unboxed this on my channel. The Fantastic Four movie has an extended cut. So, if you want to be able to watch it, buy the DVD version of it, and or buy uh, Fantastic Four digitally, but they will have the extended cut like with it. Like, Unfortunately, they, they do not have it separate. Again, that that cut of that film fills so many gaps with that one. Like, it makes a lot of sense. Like, guys, if you want to watch a movie that explains everything, it makes a lot of sense. Go watch that version. All right. <laughs> it's again totally worth your watch. All right, a couple more here. Um, I want to talk about Ghost Rider here. The first one, 2007. Um, that one also has an extended cut. Again, I've never seen the theatrical one, but I could definitely tell, like, probably some of the pinpoints. Like, oh, this was added in, or, like, whatever. Like, um, of course, I'm going to stick with that one. I don't remember if the extended cut was released on DVD, like, maybe on the first release before it came out on Blu-ray. But, yeah, uh, Ghost Rider extended cut, pretty cool. Um, did I get through everything? Oh, no, wait. I, I got one more movie franchise here, guys. So, we have the Taken Trilogy. Yep, Liam Neeson. Um, of course, I've watched the extended cuts of these, and, again, they're, they're worth it. And I'm hoping to buy the digitals on Movies Anywhere soon. And, unfortunately, yeah, unfortunately, when I download the code, it only downloaded the theatrical ones because normally when you have a digital code it would give you like the two different versions of a movie like I remember with BVS it gave me the two different versions of of the movie like theatrical and the director's cut it's like you think they would give me the extended cuts too but nope like we can't have six copies of this that's too much <laughs> apparently um yeah, again, these different cuts of different movies just give the movies some oomph, guys. Like, man, like, why wouldn't you want to watch these? If this gets annoying to some people, I am happy to say I don't care. Because, like I said, I will continue to preach about different cuts of different movies until people start acknowledging them. And I have gotten a little bit of feedback from people. Like, it's mostly centered around Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man. Like, people will talk about 2.1 and the editor's cut. Like, thank you guys. We have a start there. We have a start there. Again, there are some different cuts of different movies that are acknowledged. Like, um, probably BVS is one of them. Uh, definitely Zack Snyder's Justice League is one of them. Uh, definitely The Wolverine. Uh, Deadpool 2, the super duper freaking cut. Um... Uh, this is Future Past the Road Cut, you know? Um, those are probably, like, the prime examples of those cuts that people talk about. And, seriously, I want to get your guys' opinions on these cuts. Like, uh, which cuts do you prefer and which ones do you watch for the rest of your life? Again, just whatever cut of a movie you have, like, director, extended, whatever, just stick with that one, you know? Um... Because um, whenever I show a different cut of a movie to my to my parents especially, because I don't expect them to memorize any movie scenes, but like I I, I do point out the scenes like which ones are new, right? Um, sometimes on a rare occasion they can pick up some scenes, you know, like what they remember, like from different cuts. Like, hmm, good on you guys. Like, <laughs> oh man. Yeah, like I said, I'm never going to stop talking about these different cuts of different movies. Um, 
and who knows what the MCU going for if they'll have other extended cuts, you know, because like I said, No Way Home was one of them. Um, again, Star Wars was technically the franchise that started with extended cuts with the original trilogy. Um, who knows if they'll have any future extended cuts, you know? You know, and I'm definitely supportive of, like, directors who definitely want to get their cuts of their films out. Like, again, like, Zack Snyder is one of them. Um, you know, Sam Raimi, like, he did, he did a really good job in the editor's cut. Like, again, that, that's, that's his decent version, right? Alright, guys, I think this wraps it up for this episode. Man, this was so much fun talking about this, and... Honestly, I really wanted to make sure I talk about different cuts. Like, um, this is mostly loosely around like sci-fi. You know, I don't, I don't hear any other like reality films or whatever like having different cuts. Like, well, I guess Taken is kind of sci-fi almost, but it's like, you know, based on reality, of course, like um, real events. But like. Yeah, let me know in the comments if there are different cuts of different films besides sci-fi, guys. Like, I would really like to know. Um, and I don't intend to own every single, like, different cuts of different movies. Again, just ones that I want to watch personally. And, you know, I really highly doubt that Deadpool and Wolverine will have, like, another super duper freaking cut. Because this is Disney's first R-rated movie. I know they won't cut anything out. Like, they're going hardcore rated R, like... Why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you go hardcore? Um, there are, I guess, like some special editions that are, I don't know if they're technically considered cuts. Like, um, apparently X2 had a, a special edition and Blade Trinity had like a different ending. I saw that. Um, I guess it was a DVD. And actually, I think it had two different endings. Uh, yeah, I definitely saw those for sure. Um, But those, I wouldn't consider those you know, like extended cuts, really. <laughs> Alright guys, uh, again, thanks so much for watching. You guys know what to do. Please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. Please turn the post notification bell for my content if you haven't, haven't already. And uh, like I said, I, I am working on my Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. podcast episode review. And yeah, like I said, I'm taking my time with it. Uh, hopefully you guys will enjoy enjoy that when it comes up. I know it's not coming up right away, but, like, when I when I can get it prepped. Like, yeah. Again, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for buying me. The Lord be with you guys. Old stuff, guys. Peace out, guys. And uh, get your extended cut on. Get your director's cut on. Whatever cut you cuts you, you guys got. All right, you guys have a good night. Bye, guys.